Missy okay. Ghana, yeah. If if, <laughs> if, if 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 the next four years, right? If we get uh, Ekufuado, next four years, mm-hmm. every birthday you pay tax. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when you say Ghanaian, yeah. and I they, guess they, they say, say come, come, <laughs> no, come and experience. We didn't say come and take our men from us because already, right? We and the men, mm-hmm. and now they are taking all our men away. And the man came to Ghana, he didn't have, he didn't have access to internet today in Ghana. Of course, Abia, 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 there was no connection. Maybe there was no connection. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh hell no! Uh-uh. Hey, that was very innovative. Sure. <laughs> Hi, lovely people! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Ofori Wadiodu. If this is the first time you are seeing me, I am a YouTuber based in Accra, Ghana. It will help a great deal if you can subscribe to this channel. Also like my videos. I have quite a lot of interesting videos you can binge on. So feel free and welcome to the family. So today's video is going to be an interesting one if I do say so myself. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i have with me three other guests that are going to join me to you know delve into this topic this topic has been on the lips of everyone it's actually trending okay so i knew it wouldn't be as much interesting if i have to sit by myself and share my opinion or thoughts on on the, on the topic right so i managed to convince three people to join me all for you guys so that's why you need to subscribe right and give me the confidence right boost the confidence so i can collaborate and bring more interesting stuff to you and the topic is on 30 december yeah i know a lot of people have opinions on this so let's make this engaging okay share your thoughts with us in the comments section and let's keep the conversation going if you are interested in this stuff then do stick and stay tell your friend to tell another friend that we are on okay hi guys so today i don't have one two but three guests on my channel and these are people that i talk to on a regular okay one of the topics that we've been picking at is what we want to discuss on today so i thought mm, why don't i put these guys together and let's just share our thoughts on this issue without wasting much time <laughs> we'll just move straight into the introduction i am a Hinewa. i'm here in ghana What's your profession or what are you into? Oh, I am a dressmaker. <laughs> I am a dressmaker here. Yeah. So yeah, you're, you're an entrepreneur. A dressmaker. I prefer that one. But you're an entrepreneur. <laughs> a dressmaker. All right, let's move to the lady. <laughs> Hi, I'm Perlene, connecting from Denver, Colorado. I work in a hospital, mainly drawing blood. Sometimes they call me the vampire. Wow. But that's what I do. <laughs> Professor. Uh, my name is Theo. I'm connecting from Perth Fleet, Essex, United Kingdom. Um, what do I do? Um, I work in the tech industry. Great. Um, welcome, guys, and thank you all for taking time of your busy schedules <laughs> uh, to join yes. me my channel let's start with the origination of dirty december um i'll start with perlin perlin what do you think um is dirty december and how did it come about so i thought it um i thought it originated from ghana but after doing a little research i guess it came from nigeria so nigerians can take that but now, when you say dead to December, everybody's thinking about Ghana. So we're taking it now. Um, 
it has also become very synonymous with like going to Africa to have fun, forgetting about your troubles, really getting down from night till dawn. So I think it's like it's becoming a, a celebratory name or something like that. Great. Right, cool. So for me, without um, I stand to be corrected anyway. Um, without further um, research, um, I I can only say um, this uh, because of my experience I had in Ghana. So uh, for me, I say um, that December um, came about um, as a result of um, your return, and it's basically people um, from the diaspora coming down to Africa or Ghana to be precise, um, just to connect, you know, have fun, visit places of interest and also um, get to know people. But I think now it's more to do with like people coming down to just, you know, party and, you know, just connect with uh, friends from other countries and just, you know, show. Yeah. Yeah. Ahinka, would you add something? No, I'm here for the trends. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> also, when I was doing my research, just as Pearl um, just said, originally I learned is um, Nigerian thing. So it started in Nigeria, and then maybe um, what caught our attention was the year of return. Right, that's when people really started paying attention to Africa. You know, um, I think for all Africans, no, let me not say all Africans, and <laughs> let me just narrow it down to myself and my experience. I know that growing up, um, usually when it's 24th, okay, I said, you know, we said, you know, we so, um, I know, say for us, it's like a culture thing, it's not. Um, something that started now and um, before the migration was from the villages to the cities and so 24th like um christmas is a time for family to 24th let let us say by that time the world and even for mm -hmm. us even at that time when we were very young our parents would take us to the village and that's when we get to meet with our cousins and you know spend the christmas together we can collaborate the 2000 in one house <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah a bit cheese i will go to the stream the riverside whatnot experience the village life and i also know that those in the um the diaspora and it's almost as are like towards december no they come home to come and celebrate the christmas holidays and the festivities with their family here in ghana so for me when um I like I didn't know that it started from somebody in my head. No, it's something that we do often, and then really the government did. just cap capitalized on it to draw in uh more foreigners, um, especially the black Americans, because at a point in time it's like um, a lot of them were looking for their roots, mm -hmm. uh -huh, and mm -hmm. most of them came right. here, yeah. They came to Ghana, went to the castle. Um, the slave castle, they wanted to learn more about slavery and how they were shipped up and whatnot. Uh -huh. So I think those things picked on the interest and then the government decided to put something together for those group of people. However, no, as a Kromo honey, they always sky higher than and to know. And you know, I think Ghanaians in general, Ghanaians are nice to foreigners. Yeah. So very, very the reception, nice. yes, and the ambience, of course, we have very good places. So all those things is what uh, brought about the, the citizen. But wow, well, this is my opinion, please. Um, so mm -hmm. um that is what it I it was the year of return mm -hmm. that had a program called Betty Ring. Mm -hmm. From isn't it that easy? Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that it's really yeah, that made it Betty the same. Oh, okay. Oh. All right. So I would like I would like us to zoom down on oh. um the year of return. Okay, because all of us are so let's just do what we know best, right? Um, so the year of return, no. Um, what do you think about it? 
Now, after the year of return, I think it went well, so we extended to beyond the return. So currently, we are in beyond the return, and we get a lot of foreigners coming in to experience Ghana. Usually around December, it doesn't mean that they don't come outside of December, but then the popular, yeah. the popularity and then the crowd is usually um around December. We have no yeah. activities mm -hmm. around that time just to engage them and entertain them. Uh -huh. So uh, mm -hmm. this time I'll start with the professor. Why you keep calling me professor? Right now we're going to be almost serious. <laughs> <laughs> What's your take on the year of return and beyond the return? Um, I think I think it was a good initiative. Um, so basically, the year of return is well, like initiated by the government of Ghana to, you know, to um, it's more using Ghana as a gateway for the diaspora to come in and connect. You know, um, which I think it was a really really good initiative because it was more of an open door for a lot of people that haven't been to Ghana before, you know, to come to Ghana. And then you had about, if I'm not mistaken, you had about like. 250,000 coming into the country in yeah. December. Personally, mm -hmm. I think it's good for the local people, you know, um, yeah. it's good for the government as well. Um, you know, you've got a lot of, it, it, for me, I think it creates a lot of jobs for people as well, the local people. Um, you know, little business, they can, you know, create stuff that they can sell, like merchandise and all that, you know, and also like for the tourist industry as well. Um, a lot of places uh, where people visit and also history as well. It, you know, we're selling our history to other people, you know, especially like people from, um, the, um, from, from other countries because, you know, they have that notion like, Africa, who's Africa, dear Charlie? There's nothing there, you know. Um, I was watching mm -hmm. an interview by, um, I think a couple of uh, weeks ago, a month ago, by uh, I think Rick Ross, and he was talking about the cars and, you know, the, the things in Ghana. You know? So it's more of an eye opener for them as well. So they come here and uh, they come to Ghana and they see all these things, and at least they put us on the, you know, um, on the map as well, you know. And yeah. for people, yeah, so Ghana is so rich with culture. Like the Ashanti Kingdom is one of the biggest, you know, kingdoms, and people don't speak about it a lot. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it's also an opportunity for people to come and know that yeah, we have this. You know, Ghana has got gold, like the um, natural resources that we have, the minerals, gold, cocoa. People don't know much about all these things, and also Ghana um, slavery played part you know a bigger part of slavery people go to the El El elmina castle yeah um yeah to see and um yeah so i think for me i think it was a really really good initiative the downside of it is also the cost well, you know, in we'll, terms of we'll, we'll come, we'll for come me to the downside so hold on okay all right cool so yeah basically yeah so you can have Pelin, Pelin, you just did the trend Tell me you're an African mom <laughs> without saying what? it. I said you just did the trend. Tell me you're an African what? mom without saying you just muted yourself and our man now warning with you. <laughs> 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 of course, I'm an African mom. I will tell you. <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um on the lighter side so Pele, let's hear um, your take on this sorry on the a year of return uh, yeah yeah um i think really social media played a big part for me not for me but generally people started seeing like celebrities going to ghana a lot yeah and then uh for boris kujo whose dad is ghanaian i think people um I think he was really um, instrumental. Yes, he was all over the place wearing that shiki Arab African prints with the wife and his kids. Mm -hmm. um, but then I know in, I know individual people who are not celebrities myself who have actually um, been been to Ghana because of this initiative and purchased properties for themselves. Actually, a Caucasian man. <laughs> um cash in all of his 401k retirement wow. money and went to Ghana. I don't know which part, but 
he was so happy. He's like, I am making, I am taking all my money. I'm moving out. I bought a whole land that he couldn't actually buy here. Um, built a house. He, he's actually like in his 60s. So it's legit retirement, <laughs> not just mm. going there for vacation. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's really, it's really great also because we have, well, we have a lot of the um, Ghanaians who were actually born outside of Ghana, really being proud and actually starting to learn a whole lot. And there was this girl that I follow trying to speak the, the tree language, which is so funny, but I commend her for trying because now people are like, wait, she's actually trying to learn the language. And she went back to Ghana and she's like, going to all these places because of the year of return people are actually really proud to showcase um their Ghanaian culture so i'm 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 all for it i'm glad that we're here now like we're still it's still gaining more popularity and i think every year every year it's going to be big every year is going to be something different yeah now it's like it's cool to be a Ghanaian so yeah <laughs> yeah I was frustrated with one of the processes here in Ghana and I was like ah Ghana pa anyway who wants to come to Ghana anyway I was with a foreigner I would like to come to Ghana <laughs> Yeah, I want to come to Ghana. Actually, then, then now she was explaining how she planned to come, but you know, she didn't have yeah. anyone to come with, and then later she found yeah. out that um, the some part of the family is coming and she right. and is planning to come next year. So definitely, it's a whole group, a lot of oh, sorry, a whole group. Twenty four. So this year, yeah, yeah. So um, someone started a group on. I saw it on um I saw it on TikTok. She started a group for if you don't have anyone to go to Ghana with, join this WhatsApp group. It's the nice. thing. <laughs> yeah, but I've seen yeah. lots of people who actually came here on their own but are making yeah. connections. So they go yeah. to the group out there. Oh, you can go to Ghana and <laughs> Then people go on a place that you can actually go on as a woman, and you feel yes, and the people are nice as well. Yeah. So also, also let's not forget, Afrobeat also played a major instrument in that because I remember when I came to this country, right? Uh, Years ago, right? Those times when you go to the club, right? They used to play only bashments. Back then, only Bashman, you know, you won't hear any Afrobeat. And people were yeah. not even allowed to say, oh, I'm African. You know, people yeah. were, it was cool to say, I'm Jamaican, I'm Caribbean. Oh, okay. But people didn't want to associate themselves mm -hmm. with um, Africa at all. But now, when you go anywhere, I think I went, I got on the bus, I think somewhere last two weeks or three weeks, right? I got on the bus and the, the, um, the, the bus driver was played Afrobeat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So makes you so cool. happy, though. Yeah, it's like, it's wait a cool, minute, man. are you hearing this? Is yeah, this, I, I, I know words? this song. This <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, when you go to the shops, you, you hear, you know, people playing up. Uh, uh, like you go to an Indian shop, and then you hear them playing Afrobeat. You know, so, yeah. so, so it's so cool to be African now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> big time to be an African. Yeah. All right. So we looked at the the positive side, and we the locals. What do you have to say about uh, the year of it? It's been good. It brought a lot of revenue to the country for the entrepreneurs, the braiders, from braiders to dressmakers to mm -hmm. restaurants. And yeah. Yeah. It brought a lot of revenue. <laughs> I also think so that quick question. Um let me let me ask um let me ask you a question as in because uh, of your, your dressmaker, right? So um so in terms of you saying that, do you see a change, right, during that December period and then your, your normal periods that like mm. people there's a lot of change and there's, mm. there's if you don't take care, you actually take the others more oh. what you can do. Right. Mm. Okay. 
that the money might lead you on to take a lot of others and then you might deceive people if it's I mean you don't take care because they obviously don't bag in with stuff. Mm. Like call people. Mm-hmm. And you say, Oh, this is just a hundred mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. I'm gonna pay in one fifty cities so you can actually make it quick for me. Nice. So, yeah, it's 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 good. Mm. <laughs> And you know that tip culture is not something inculcated in us as Ghanaian, right? We like to give all right, but then um, when you are paying for services, if they say it's hundred and fifty Ghana cities, um, most people will pay for the exact. It's not um, in our culture to tip, right? Yeah. Uh, but for people from the US, I think it's mandatory. You have to negotiate, yeah. and there's a percentage as well. I learned. Uh huh. Yeah. And then obviously the there's a gap in the standards of living. So when you you know the city has depreciated a lot in the past few years. So when you do the exchange rate, you get a lot of money to spend. So giving that little extra to get a, a better service. A better service. Yeah. They don't mind. They don't mind. It doesn't hurt. Yeah. And for to add on to what Ohenka said, I think that uh, Cecilia Gana, <laughs> this is, it's even funny. Uh, Cecilia Gana for no, I said, uh, um, you know, they, are, they are marrying foreigners, so. not foreigners <laughs> per se, but uh, those that are living outside. They say, I'm a young boy, we are worried now here when we're outside. Hey, that girls, we are suffering here. <laughs> you're trained, you're we are suffering here. It's not a joke. Oh. Man. Yeah, yeah. Boys, man. Especially, <laughs> because it's yeah, the Did weddings you? and all those things, they, they fit it around the December. The December period. And, honestly, all, the and all from outside. Yes, and they come with their friends, like 2,000 billion friends. <laughs> and then Avengers, they will be fighting over the uh, videographers, the photographers, the <laughs> they say, hey. So now the yeah. young boys there. Um, no, I think Ghanaian men have mm. a good rap when it comes to African men, for sure. So mm. you will see like ni- the Nigerian girls are like, hey, Ghana, uh, hey, where can I find a Ghanaian man? Yes. When you go to a Atlanta, I guess Atlanta, the Ghana guys there are doing the girls good. I don't know, but I think I saw a trend. Unless, you know, hey, yeah, when you say, and I guess they say, come, come, (laughs) no, come and experience. We didn't say come and take our men from us because already, right, and the men. (laughs) And now they are taking all our men away. They're guys. How many three girls this now? Seven years, five years relationship. By the time you yeah. realize the guy is married to who? The wife is outside the country. Mm-hmm. Hey, year of return. <laughs> oh, honestly. Yeah, so I guess when it comes to like on a personal level, the locals don't appreciate us. The them coming for the the guys. Yeah, right? well, we do, and then the 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 guys too. They are complaining that when they. <laughs> They're in the any boys, especially the UK guys. When they drop, all of a sudden, yeah. their girlfriends go missing. They are going on family trips to the village. My grandmother is dying. Uh, but on the road, on the road, uh, UK. My grandmother even... is dying. My little sister has got your call. I have to sit. <laughs> I have to sit and on maybe sit here for the rest of the month. <laughs> Yeah, I saw I saw it on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And I mean, man came to Ghana and said he didn't have internet. Uh, so yes, 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 yes. Oh yeah, yes, yes. I think the the wife <laughs> him on those TV series where they they saw yeah, the court problem. Um, the oh, it was court, the yeah. court. Yes, yes. Oh really? Yes. Mm-hmm. And the man I said he to came to it. Ghana and he didn't <laughs> have as, he didn't have access to internet today in Ghana. Maybe there was no connection. Maybe there was no connection. <laughs> <laughs> well, the dad was like, no, it's not Ghana. I went to Ghana and I had internet for 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
um i want us to look at the downside okay let's talk about individuals and the locals um has this um affected us positively or negatively I think we have a lot to say on this because we, the locals, it has affected us a lot. Mm -hmm. Now, everything is expensive because of 30 December. Yeah. Prices are going up like 200%, not even like 5%, like 200%. So it's making the standard of living very high and it's expensive. Everything is actually expensive. Yeah. And in Ghana, too, there's no like consumer regulatory commission or anybody to really Sister, come in do you, <laughs> send right? our yeah. do you know notice me, how internet went up just last month me mm. i appreciate demand mm. and supply because you know i like business mm -hmm. right and i understand that when there's demand you can increase prices just for that period but in ghana here sister ghana when demand in the costroom not say two more it when it calm comes down, down it, doesn't. it doesn't prices don't reduce even mm. if there's no demand the price mm. are still high a cow will yeah yeah it's That's really bad. hard this honestly i don't think i will be able to live in ghana comfortably and now hospitality oh, first, first of all because that is what everyone yes. is saying. So the government have oh. done these things in their head. They are making, um, they are giving the locals a lot of business. Um, mm. Government has increased taxes ridiculously. Ridiculously. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm. That is one. Two, the business entities themselves, the prices is unrealistic. Some of them, Mr. Buffet, 700 Ghana cities, how many Ghanaians can afford buffet 700 Ghana cities? When you go to Europe and other, you know, coffee, and I know buffet, now you call uh, France, now you need to 20 euros. So, sir, come and see, yeah. come and yeah. see. A lot. We did about yeah. two or three buffet, you know, it we do 30 euros, but then the variety and the quality of food. Then you carry seven hundred Ghana cities. Make off our way. Meanwhile, major five hundred a month. Make yes, off a right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And all this one is because these people come in, they ex they change their money, and they don't feel the pain. And you know, let's be honest. I know that it's not all rosy outside there. A bit susu, a susu that me too. A bit susu. <laughs> no one made you that. But what? But what? What? Ten days. Oh man, the extra one day will be And you are making me five days. You can't. You can't really. You can't really blame them anyway. Five days. No, I best say no. That's not mm. your 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 normal uh, standard of living where you are. If you want to rest a thousand Ghana cedis, who rest an hour, but maybe the three months will teach you. Ghana Hanum say, I'll show how to go to be a guitar rest at three months. What you have to do is one month. You take it off, you do another one. And some of us have ever been in a Hanum say, I said, sir, a uh, euros ne dollars. I be born a thousand Ghana. A kita wo ni ti mu six months kwa no on se sign. In Ghana, yeah. Like I said, the bridge is cheap. It's so cheap. And okay, Theo, what, 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 Theo, what do you think? Do you think they shouldn't it's blame you? It's painful, though. It's, it's Wait, very what painful, painful because so they do that. For me, for me, right? For me, yeah. For me, uh, yeah. See, Mimi who no 50 50, right? Because, yeah. right? Obi Waha. I think, I think it, it should come down to you, you know, Sana now Kasa, you need the like they need a regulatory. I mean, that, that's, I think that's, that's what the government needs to focus on because, to, yeah. because the individuals need their four. Let's say if you go somewhere, right, and you're paying for a service, right, and you know, say you can pay extra, right, and get what you want now, wouldn't you do that? Yeah, and you have the means, right? Yeah. So for them, no, that's how it is. And, you, know, you can't really blame them, say, oh, they come here and pay thousand and they get it done. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's still cheap for them. 
So um, yeah. it's a uh, 50-50. It's for no, them, for the individual. I don't, I don't you come dispute to... that. My issue no. is, of course, even as in Ghana here, Oto Ejiani wa Ghana hanu si. Oto Ejiani wa Accra. Odi Ayemfane say, let's even bring it down part to food stuff. If you want to buy plantain, a sano wa Accra hanu si. Eno odi don't go far. Just Eastern region, two hours away from Accra. Oto wa ho, eno oto wa ha. There is vast different in prices. Mm -hmm. So it's normal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But men yen we na for a hand, you know, you like, I don't know, uh, you are encouraging them to keep that because where is their business located? It's in, it's located in Ghana. It's, it's located in Accra. It's not located in USA. What's the standard mm -hmm. of living for an ordinary Ghanaian? And then, what is yeah. the minimum wage in your country? I have say, OBG 300 Ghana City, and the scrum you just made, no, see what I 400 Ghana City, and no crown pono. It's not, you say it's not bad though, because apparently, or to feel her, she doesn't pay for electricity and rent. So a lot of people are saying that that's a good money salary for her because she doesn't pay anything. So all she has to do is to do what? Save. I will chrome now. Nancy, who panas a wood just. Uh, Obi, I bet you me a be boy. It's you know one thousand. Now what they no. Well, if you use thousand. that as the standard for oh, the rest of the year, how do you want us to patronize? Please let let, let mm -hmm. I want to understand. Me, they don't care. That's what. Is it? If you don't mean, don't mean blaming no. I'm not making yeah. yeah. because every stroke for every stroke for every stroke. Any be any say. We save it too. Can you make a dream in your mind? Since you can't say I'm I money. Money finish. I claim. I, I claim. We good. Uh huh. We go again. Say I have two susu. Me two susu. Yeah. Say I have two susu. Do you understand? And tell you know that there is nothing wrong. It's your own money. You decide what you want to do with it. But then to now make it as if say um the prices are okay, and that should be the standard. Just because you mm -hmm. are paying more elsewhere. It doesn't, it's not, yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's fair to the ordinary Ghanaian. Mm -hmm. Imagine if mm -hmm. when you are going, when you are going back, you are going to go with this hairstylist, Obama no visa, no you do a chair code, then you can continue the business there. Then it's fine. You can encourage her to keep those, but then even, you can even look at readjusting and then making some profits for yourself. There's no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You can hook that. Okay, see, and let me let me ask you. Them to let your me. Friend. But then, if you are coming here to come and do it and go back, you need to be considerate because the ordinary Ghanaian would they be able to afford that kind of service? Because you are not here all year round. Are you here all year round? You are just coming no. for one month out of the twelve months. Then the eleven months. You know, how do you want us? Me four hundred, so well, that's like so, and I'm so, the don't you think one month me Don't you think, sir? Don't you think, sir? The hairdressers are greedy, because right, if someone can afford for it, now charging and they're willing to pay, that's fine. Yeah, Cause, yeah, because different stroke for different folks, right? Yeah. So if another person comes in, a local comes in. And they can't afford, and you're still charging them that. Don't you think that that's the person is a greedy person? So you can't really me. I don't think that you 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 should blame it on the on the on the foreigners. Okay, okay. I think. Yeah. But to be fair to you, you know, say um, we have a bargain system. So sometimes oh. you're working um, for some services, and you feel the price is a bit up. You can always negotiate. However. Um, looking at the current system, like I work and some of them they don't even negotiate, rather, no, they'll add up to whatever price you give them. So, sometimes when you walk in and you want to negotiate, you look a bit funny, mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. And then, um, in reality, so there are some places that you can walk in and actually negotiate, oh, yeah. yeah, with the pricing, but it, it is what it is. Um, Cecilia was like. When they provide services for A and the prices are high, they don't complain, blah, blah, blah. They expect, say, once I will buy in after that, 
Uber share the same amount, which is which is what is not making sense. It's not about taking advantage of the demand. Because if you tell me, and I think on, I sent you guys a video. I don't know if you read the comment. The lady that was complaining about the 1,000 cities break. When you go into the comment section, someone was saying it then, uh, say a poor mentality to think, say, your co ghanaians who is like the business owner, no, if they can make more, why are you saying, say, they shouldn't charge more? But yeah, that's why obviously don't you, someone, hmm? that lives why, why don't you tell the Chinese people that the um, I mean, they say they are stuff cheaper in China. Uh, so any India phone now, more do more your customer service now. Why mm -hmm. don't you tell them say you are being charged higher there? That's why you are coming to them. So they should also increase their prices there. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, so their standard of living and then the cost there is cheaper. It is what it is. And so, um, <coughs> if you want cheaper rates, you come here and get cheaper rates and go back. It's as simple as that. But don't come here and expect the prices should go high because hey, eh, food, do, do. then why do people go to China and Turkey to go and buy things to come and sell? And it's not can nobody can make profit anyway. Mm -hmm. That's my yeah. Point. How is this negatively impacting businesses? I can't come back to Ghana because airlines have hiked these prices. That's really negative for me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm sure that like hotels and all these restaurants are really racking up on yeah, the positive yeah. side. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think I think the positive um outweighs the negative in in that sense because you know as even with with the prices as well, like businesses, people are making money. You know, me one thing I I, I um I I went to um. Bali, right? And Bali is just like Ghana, but it's just it's it's, it's basically just like Ghana. And one thing that I noticed, right, um, is the locals, right, and the businesses they are making a lot of money from from the tourists coming in. Like little, they're selling little little things. You know, they're trying to create jobs, like in terms of a whole lot, yeah. And I looked at it, and then um, I kind of compared it to Ghana, and I asked myself, is Ghana doing the same thing? Are people making a lot of money from people coming in into the country you know and i don't know i can't really tell because i'm not in that business sector in ghana but that's the question i i, I keep asking i'm like are people making money are people looking for avenues to cash in when these people come in uh but i guess so you, you can also look at in terms of like um like there's a lot of like lounge uh clubs restaurants you know, um, yeah, there's a lot of these stuff that are being open for people to just come in and patronize them. So from my point of view, I can also see that people are also, um, yeah, making money out of it. But in general, are they, are they, are they, because obviously like most of these, you know, um, restaurants are owned by foreigners, I would say, I, I'm not sure mm -hmm. that's correct it anyway, mm -hmm. but the, the people like the, 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 the low income people that, you know, the look are they are they cashing out? Like are they cashing in on people coming in? That's that's one mm -hmm. question I was kind of asked myself as well. Yeah, that's hard to tell. Yeah. So, uh, some are definitely cashing out. Some are definitely cashing out. Because beauty, beauty see, and I think on, one of the beauty industry, yeah. The beauty industry, the hotels, Airbnb, because mm -hmm. one apartment, the place is always full every December. Not just the same, but mm -hmm. it's, it's always for there. Yeah. Uh, I think they're one of mm -hmm. the in the bar. That's where they go to because, because that place is quite a bit affordable mm. compared mm. to the other ones. Because yes. and it's in a good get, area, a uh, whole you can get it around like 100 and something a night, mm. but the others 200, 300. So, other me, it's applied. I think it's a thing about Ghanaians, Ghanaians are greedy. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just in the African blood. Like we are greedy. We are greedy. We don't care about integrity. Mm -hmm. It's like we are thinking about now. Mm -hmm. I, I like because I keep wondering, like how you know foreigners tend to have good things about Ghanaians, but Ghanaians are not good to themselves. <laughs> Each other, yeah. Yeah. 
even with the businesses and all those things. I think that we Ghanaians, we, we are making life difficult for ourselves. Like now, houses and lands and all those yeah. things, they are quoted in Dallas. We are Ghanaians, we are... That is one thing I was shocked. Part. That's not, being, it's not fair, it's not fair at all. We are no. being in Ghana cities. cities. <laughs> yes. we now and things are sold in Dallas. In Dallas. May <laughs> say, and that mm, office or, or land, mommy, is 140,000 Ghana cities. And the area the person mentioned, I said, no, it's not possible. Uh, 140,000 okay. today okay. in such an area. Yes. The person mm. kept yes, yes. I should come and say, I said, it's not possible. So I just sent someone to go because me, I know, said it's not possible. But Onu no Dimechini. So I just didn't want him to feel like, um, like I'm yeah. adding him. So I just sent someone. So it was $140,000. So I'm asking if I should buy a land, $140,000. So you can't buy a land. You can't buy a land. And you can buy a land. Yeah. At my age, I have $140,000. But apparently, yeah. some Ghanaians are living their life. So where are they getting mm. the from? Their businesses, you know, like there's a gap in everything. Seriously. Because me... I think say I'm in the middle. I'm not uh, poor or I'm rich. not poor and I'm not I'm in the middle. And middle class. Exactly. And I, I'm doing a lot of things to try and su- and survive. I am very okay. Um yeah. even in my professional life, I'm not at the bottom. I'm also, you know, in the middle. So then I'm yeah. thinking. With everything I'm doing, I cannot afford certain things in this Ghana here. Yeah. So how are people making money <laughs> this life? So when people say Ghanaians are magician, that's why there's a lot of corruption. <laughs> magician. People. Yes, because if you see the gadgets, especially the young ones, the kind of gadgets yes. that they hold and use. Mekra, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. understand? Uh-huh. So, um, there's a gap. I don't know if those prices, or maybe we are not their target market. I don't know. Seriously, there's a little confusion for me there. The because issue is if we don't pay the next month. Exactly. Yeah. I am here from paying, but I, someone I'm else can afford. So... I don't really understand what am I doing wrong. Then this is like putting a lot of pressure on the locals, I guess. That's why a lot of people feel like they need to relocate because um, what is happening around there and what they have in their pockets, it doesn't match. You know, the man yeah. is not mm-hmm. added because I'm mm-hmm. doing everything that I've been asking to I'm going to work, I'm earning salary, but I'm saving and it, it doesn't you know it, it doesn't amount to anything so then what is the problem you understand so this is coming from a very resourceful woman so exactly. i have no chance you got it exactly <laughs> <laughs> well, so, dear. so can you imagine so the business i know they are cashing out however another angle is the taxes from government i don't know if the yeah. government has done enough for businesses to, them to, yeah. to charge those kind of taxes. The taxes from government is too much. There's I don't a, know why. I don't know why they pressure on the taxes, taxes on the mobile money. I didn't oh. understand why. All of a sudden, oh. why why are they taking money? If we are already paying for sending the money. The so area. I didn't really like that at all. Hell. So but now, if I want to transfer money from my own bank account to my, to my mobile account. money, there's a charge on it. Then when I'm going to redo, there's a charge on it. I see oh, wow. the money. That same money. No, I see if the money goes to my bank account. Even if it's going to your bank account, you also pay. I think when you are redrawing from your bank account, it's free. But when you are moving from mobile money to your bank account, a charge. there's a charge. As if when you are going to withdraw from the ATM, you don't pay anything because there are charges on the ATM, the mm-hmm. Visa card. I think quarterly. Wow. Yes. Yes. Quarterly. Yes. That's too much. You pay. That's too much. So the taxes yeah. in the country 
You know, yeah. I feel like the government really does not care. It's not helping. Not, not at all. He doesn't care at all. He doesn't mm-hmm. listen no. to the ordinary Ghanaian. He doesn't say because I don't know if you are looking at a certain groups of group of people and making all these dis- decisions. Mm-hmm. Um, what percentage of the population fall in that? I know, of course, they have reasons Ooh. for doing that. Mm-hmm. One of the yeah. things I think they, they stated was the now you know there's all, a lot of online business and you know mm-hmm. Ghana the structure is not there. Most of them are yeah. Mm-hmm. Online business. business. If you want to do an ad mm-hmm. on Instagram, mm-hmm. you are charged. No, but you some, are taxed. No, no, no. Some, you some, are some are on Instagram. They don't do anything. What? You are charged. Yeah, you are charged on the advert. Uh, but some mm-hmm. don't do any. Yeah. Some don't do paying, any. When you are paying, they will tell you that from Ghana, da 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 da, da you are supposed to pay a tax of da 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 plus. The money Instagram, yeah. Charged. So that's when you want to run an ad, but some are not running any ads, but then they are making a lot wow. of money on there. Do you understand? So I think they want to find a way to tax them. What, whatever mm-hmm. they are selling, that's, that is whatever, like... but whatever they are selling, when it came to the country, didn't they tax those things? Didn't yeah, they... Exactly. So, yeah, so they're paying import and export, yes. you know, importation costs gonna... and all those things. So, yeah, for the businesses, I know okay. some of them, those that are making it are making it those that are enjoying from this thing is a handful to be honest that's how i see it definitely um they are positive some people are actually making money out of this but they are a handful but then the rest wow. we are struggling um yeah we really see the impact and as a only second crunch so our taxes no a door so mm. if you want to improve uh, tourism <clears throat> and all those things it's difficult if you want to you want to travel around here in ghana visit all these places hey um rooms, but, ghana but should... I, I heard i heard the the mp mp for was it um the minister for tourism he said, um uh they'll be doing some funeral stuff <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that was very that's okay, very innovative, yeah. you know as part of tourism very, oh, yeah yeah very innovative. Fast people to the funeral ground what it's painful <laughs> sometimes <laughs> oh hell no hey, that was very that. innovative sure <laughs> Mr. Okay. Ghana yeah if if, if, if if the next four years right if we get uh, a kufuado next four years mm-hmm. every birthday you pay tax <laughs> <laughs> So now we move from there. Let's look at the culture side of things. I think one of the main purpose of this is for others to come in to experience our culture and learn about. Yeah, it. we have a lot when it comes. Ghana is very rich in culture. Do you think we are actually getting the results? Yeah, yeah we are. Coming. We're getting. Mm-hmm. Are they showing interest think... in culture? And when they come in, do they do culture stuff? <laughs> From yeah. social media. Yeah. Doing... I mean, I haven't yeah. been to Afrochella. Yeah. I'm looking forward to really come and enjoy Afrochella. Yeah. Um, I think it's one of the cultural mm-hmm. events. Um this year people was really... Afrofusion. Afro yeah. Um last year. Last year, I think I was. Oh. I think it's become like the hub of like black joy Mm -hmm. and it's like oh if you're going to africa you know it's just the sun there's warmth the food is amazing people are amazing i think with the cultural aspects that's like literally all that people think about when they're coming is coming to enjoy the like real african culture so i think it's really getting the it's it's getting out there for people yeah. yeah, I do, I do, I do agree as well. I think, um, yeah, with the culture aspect, I think, yeah, they've done really well with that. But I also feel like they could do more. I mm. think when people are coming to Ghana, I think they need to do a bit of research, you know, and get to know more and yeah. make a decision when they come here. Sorry, when they go to Ghana. So I think people should, um, yeah, to do a bit more research and then also get the chance to 
do more stuff. So it's not all about the, the the clubs going to the clubs and all that, but there's more to it. You know, there's there's more history and there's more places or to to actually go and. You know, I, I believe like when you um, say, let's say like the, the northern region, I don't know if a lot of people go there, but there's a lot I of people. I have never, yeah. I've yeah, never been to the northern region. That, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of history there, you know. Uh, cold, you know, but I don't think people do go there. So, yeah, so I think people should. Yeah, I think people, and also like like Kumasi as well. I don't know if a lot of people, I know people go to Kumasi, but um, I don't know if they go, they, um, they they go there um, um um to learn about culture as well. For business or for personal stuff. Yeah, exactly. So people I think people need to kind of reset more, read more before they come. Yeah. I mean before people think about animals like, oh, which part of Africa are you from? And then when I tell them Ghana, they're like, Oh, I went to Kenya because you know i wanted to see the animals i'm like oh okay but we don't have that type of like <laughs> we don't have animals in ghana like that but we have other yeah, things so <laughs> but you know, we do, yeah we do have we actually yeah, we do but the safari, safari. Place called safari. Safari. I, I went to I went, I went to shine hills i saw a lot of is things. there the monkeys or the, the bamboo <laughs> No, there were zebras, what? there were ostrich. What? Hey, a shy hill. I have never. I have never been. I need to find out. Um, oh, it's true. I can send you. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. They have the zebras. They have wow. Mm -hmm. Actually, Kofi, you have like, I, don't, I don't like the way Fua is looking at her. Hey, because she's. I, I don't know. It's true. You haven't been there before. <laughs> well, ostrich is not there. I don't know. So call work pediatric or maybe Okay, this is a homework for you guys. You guys should go there and video it for us because we want to. Maybe I'm excited about the zebra, but they're not oh, but the, the ostrich. Zebra, and then yeah, when you go to the north, to the the elephants. For the culture, I would agree with Theo. I think they need to do more because it, it looks like uh, most people just stay in Accra and. You know, at most they will do Cape Coast and Elmira, and that's it. Mm. And then now we have the Muslim Kwame Nkrumah uh, Memorial Park. So I yeah, think, have you been there? not yet. Let's go there tomorrow. You guys should. You guys should. You know, sh like this is really telling me that uh, whenever I come to Ghana, I get I stay in Tema and Accra. Yeah. <laughs> I went uh, we went on a road trip to Cape Coast before. I, I mean, was that was very fun. fun, right? Hey, it was, that was fun. <laughs> oh. This dirty December, everybody thinks it's all about the club and staying up all exactly. night because they yeah. all stay in Accra and then they don't do much. Do you understand? So yeah. for their cultural bit, I think we need to do a little bit more. Ghana Tourism Authority or something. Authority, yeah. I think so. They need. They to have the money. I don't know. The yeah. <laughs> is really fun now. When you go, but they have the quad bike and other true. things to go through. And they have this mm -hmm. tent. Mountain. As at the time I checked, and they though, have this it was eight hundred or seven hundred. No, it was seven hundred. It's now eight hundred. Okay, a night. Yeah. And, and also a nearby. But you cannot have lights during the day. Unless in the evening, you can't have lights during the day. Unless in the evening, well, oh. for me, but it's good. For I, I like think a good company. Oh, an adventure. So we, uh, I think that's still in general things are a little bit on the private mm -hmm. side. If you really want to explore, and I think that's the reason why even us as Ghanaians, we we don't travel that. Much. Mm. Because if price is near reasonable, I look for people to be encouraged to go out. Yeah. If I'm going, I have to travel all the way to spend that much. And I can even get better in that. Why would I travel? Yeah. Mm. Why would I travel? So the GTA needs to do more and throw more light on that. Ask people, you know, there should be tax exemptions on certain things for tourism. So that is attractive mm. and it gets people to go yeah. outside there. 
They understand. Yeah. And tax in the door so. To see a hotel tax. So I, I was even asking someone said, oh, oh bury seats because when <laughs> when they um I think that's how they calculate the tax. So for every guest, they have to write it down in their tax book. There's a tax receipt for that. So that's when they calculate the tax. So I ask if I don't need the receipt, do I have to pay the tax? Because how <laughs> the Ghana Ghana Revenue Authority, how would they know that I was here? I didn't take a receipt. <laughs> hey, so how would they know yeah. I, I was here? I don't know. So I know these things are the reason why people find loopholes and take advantage mm. of it because um things are really expensive in Ghana now, if I'm being honest. Yeah. yeah. For someone so bottom line, if you're going on vacation, have fun, but don't spend too much money to mess up the economy for the locals. <laughs> that one that one is not possible. How would you tell me <laughs> how and where to spend my money? At least exactly. <laughs> Tell it, but you no, you're there you for know, an like, experience, you plan for it, so then you see <laughs> towards that. But then yeah. you know, do you understand? And you have to put things in context. Uh-huh. Yeah. So you can't you cannot compare prices in America to prices in Accra. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Do you understand? True. Because, you know, enjoy it and leave it for what it is. You can recommend oh things are affordable, you know. Yeah. But people do stuff and go back and say, Oh, I came to bridge this uh, this long bread for one dollar. Ah, uh, this <laughs> yeah. when I put it to my inches, 30 inches bread for one dollar. Uh, yeah. Yes, then, yeah, I think so. The last time someone also uh, did a video showing her bread for one thousand dollars, and she said she used human hair. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So all those things are part of the reason why um the locals sometimes they feel like they are undercharging and they need yeah. to, you know move up a bit. <laughs> when you look at the trends, we have that's what I said. Someone said um they braided their hair for this amount and it was it's very mm-hmm. cheap because I did my nails for this. I did yes, everything, everything. Amounted to about eighty dollars. We so yeah. I tipped, so I said, was it then one one thousand? One thousand Ghana cities. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Nice. Now so that's some of the trends. Some of the trends. Then so yeah, from from the females, and I say, it yeah. got, it got, it's it's got. only from the females. You see, only <laughs> from, <laughs> as for the guys, <laughs> obin so see or buy a yabe riyani. Hey, but but on a on a real like a lot of tell it the Ghana guys are winning oh Ghana guys are <laughs> winning huh? they're winning the <laughs> the girls they're winning it's not really? a joke hmm. on the quest to find Ghanaian man I'm telling you so because now all the guys are getting married to those in the, yeah. you know, the London the London American girls Ghana girls they are yeah bro and how you just go on the wedding pages and just look at the weddings in December. Mm. Yes. Yes. I think the wedding pages, you know, it reaches a, a lot of people and they think that Ghanaian men are really looking forward to marriage. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the motivation. They, mm-hmm. they don't want to have fun. They are ready for marriage. So, I, I yeah. I like, um, I, like that. I like that for Ghanaian men. Let's man. try and wrap up. <laughs> Great. So we've had... Um, quite an informative and engaging conversation here on this particular topic. Um, we should be wrapping up now. So I'll take the last words. I'll start from Ohenka, then we go to Pio, then uh, Pio will come in, uh, we'll wrap it up and uh, that'll be long. So I would just say we should just come to Ghana in December and spend as it benefits as the entrepreneurs. So yeah, you should come and do that to December in Ghana. Yay, December 2024. Okay, sure. Hashtag. Hashtag. They said they all they all but they all be
Wow. Okay. So we move on to Theo. Yeah, I, I would say, um, yeah, you, you should like you should visit Ghana though, because Ghana is a lovely place. The people are very friendly and I'll encourage people to visit Ghana, but not just the capital, Accra, you need also need to go to places like Tamale, you know, the northern region, the other regions as well, just to learn more. Um, you can go to uh, the gold mines as well. Um, there's a lot to learn. Um, also, places like um, uh, where they manufacture the cocoa. Our cocoa uh, mine now, Sylvian cocoa mine. <laughs> when you come here, do you spend time to visit those places? Listen, no, when I come to Ghana, <laughs> the co I mean, yeah, I'll come to Ghana. Ghana. Madam, Madam will take me to Bloomba. Madam Bloomba, hey, Pearl. <laughs> This boy is the nation of dirty December. Me say, I saw I him. Fact, I saw him. Monsieur to me that will come. I don't know. Be a obey or all be fear now. Boss, I mean, a mokoto coco or parke or a bus stop or now. Ada obey do fear now. Coco is a way young. So, hey, that's in December. Who goes out and come back home at 9 a.m.? Massacre, massacre. Yes. Yeah, yeah, can you see? Oh, yeah, you could fit him, Mr. Stella. Oh, no, if you move up, then I'm going to say, so I'll pack it, so I'll send our dad into a dog, and we'll move to our son over. Oh, coffee, Jenny. You have to, oh, add, you have to add coffee's link, okay? To go, people should go and follow coffee because he goes to Ghana quite a bit and he, he knows how to have fun. He's, 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 he's the proper definition of dirty December. <laughs> if you want to know how to move around on dirty December, please follow him and take follow him. yeah follow but, till <laughs> yeah. I was still saying yeah. So like visit <laughs> other places as well and try and research more. Um yeah. I'm also trust me like I'm in for I'm all up for uh the locals cashing in me. I think so uh, yeah. And you're good for the local people to get money and make you know as much as money they can make. People, if people can afford to pay for it, why not cash in? Yeah, all right, all right. My advice to the tourists, especially African Americans, I'm gonna tell you guys to go back to Africa and um, in search of your ancestral roots. I know that there, there, there's a little confusion when it comes to like Africans and African Americans, <clears throat> even though there is the, um, the story that, you know, Africans sold, sold their own people. It, I mean, we, we are all one regardless. So I will advise that you guys will come to Africa, you know, invest, um, connect with people, have fun, because really there is no much, there's not a better place to have fun than Africa, okay? To come back to the motherland and have fun on the African soil, you know, give, and then there, I have, I feel, have a feeling that when we do something great like this by our own, for ourselves, I mean, there's no much greater feeling than that. So that's my my um my advice to the tourists. All right, my turn. So I will start with the government and the GTA. I I feel like um all the attention is in Accra. Um, I would think um more should be done outside of Accra. Um, now we know that a lot of foreigners are coming in i know they have a program or a package where you have to sign up and then they take you around and do all those things here it's good but it's like if for a certain um target market it's like it's for the older folks right so they need to find a way to you know bring in the younger ones because i i follow them quite a bit and i see that even if you have the younger ones you know joining maybe she's with he or she is with their parents, things of that sort. And, you know, they are just following their parents. But you don't see, like, young ones who come in and they are not about the partying and the clubbing and they just want to um, genuinely come and learn about the culture. So I think they need to do more outside of Accra 
um, they also have to work in the the young ones. And then I also think that you know um, we should move a little bit away from December, so that if December is just for Accra, there should be another month where um, it's like you know you come in and then you travel around Ghana, right? You mm -hmm. spend maybe one day in each region, right? And mm -hmm. then you come and wrap up in a crime and then if you want to do the dirty december where it's all programs and line up festivities in Accra, then you can come back in december and do that that's um my first and do that yeah that's that's my first um submission that's to the government and gta and then to the locals i would want us to be a bit open-minded um you know you know connect with those that are coming in not just in the terms of um yeah power we are now we want to travel do you understand do you know um okay i think you've all seen that video because it's trending the lady that is on the bike right the Ghanaian policeman saw her and he was yes. on the and then the nigerian was asking for money so this should tell yes. me that the Ghanaian, <laughs> Ghanaian men like foreigners to be honest they are yeah. all about yeah. paper <laughs> yes we want to travel around the world without any stress so yes we should be very oh i have want to add one more thing Okay, we should be open-minded and look at opportunities, right? You don't necessarily have to be in a relationship before you can benefit. You know, you can really build up, you know, what can, what do they have here? What do we have here? What can I take there that can uh, make money? What can you bring here? That kind, that, that kind of connection, okay? It's not just about the business entity and then we should also learn that um, when the demand is high, it's okay to increase prices but then when there's no demand let's be as real as we can do you understand how many Ghanaians can afford a certain lifestyle right um yeah they said here in ghana and it's important for us to be in context so that everything that we are doing is, is making sense to not just in the head but in the pocket as well <laughs> and for the tourists um, our doors are open. They are welcome. We want them to come here, experience Ghana, go out there, talk about Ghana, and invite other people to come and experience as well. But then um, they should also put things in context and in perspective. As in, the standard of living is not the same. So, of course, things will be cheaper here in Ghana. What you can do is to pay for the actual price and then give whatever tip you want. I think it's better that way. If you have more and you want to give as a gift, it's fine. Um, but um, yeah. start comparing prices and you know make them feel as if they are being underpaid or they are undercharging because their their charges is per the standard of living here in Ghana. Yeah, you said you wanted to add one last thing. I wanted to talk about safety, the fact that Ghana, Ghana is pretty safe. Yeah. Um, someone was talking about being out and about in the middle of the night as a tourist with just an Uber driver, mm -hmm. and um, she said she was pretty impressed that she wasn't scared for her life. No one stole anything from her, so we're just thankful that um. It's pretty safe to, to, to come to Ghana. You can come by yourself, you can come alone, or you can come with a group, but it's pretty safe. So that's what I just wanted to touch on. Yeah, and Ghanaians are generally friendly and very helpful people. I think that even on social media, you can make friends mm -hmm. um, just by DMing them, telling them, oh, I want to visit. It's like, you know, we are very... Um, easygoing people. It doesn't take much um, to get help from us. Um, yeah, majority of Ghanaians, of course, <laughs> there are definitely some bad nuts, but most Ghanaians are, are quite accepting and open. Yeah. All right. Um, any contribution from anyone else other than that? I'd like to bring this section to an end.
Um, thank you all once again for taking time of your busy schedules to join us uh, have this conversation. It's been an eye-opening one, an interesting one, an engaging one. I think we'll do this again um, another time. Maybe we can, pick, <laughs> we can pick one of those um, trending issues and we'll talk about about it so that we can all share our diverse views and opinions. Um, if you are new here, I am a YouTuber based in Ghana, myself and Ohenka. We are Ghanaian based. You can follow us on Amoforewa Dildu. She's Ohenka. Ohenka. And then um, Theo and Pell should kindly share your handles on social so they can follow. Um, I think mine is QMove underscore. Yep. Yeah. QMove underscore, yep. Yeah. All right, Pearly, Ghanaian pearls or yes, I was gonna say I don't remember, but <laughs> Pearl Ghanaian pearls. You have to. Um, oh yeah. yeah. You have you have you have two Instagram pages, um, one for Naki, one for yourself. So yours is Pearl Voyage. Yeah. All right. So please do well to follow all of us on our socials. Also, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Share with friends and family. We are Kramo. We are out. Bye bye. Bye. Signing right. out. Thank you. <laughs> All righty. All righty. <laughs> <laughs>